Ken from Audio Talk. In this video, I'm going to talk about choosing the quality of the components in your crossover. Crossover, that is the sort of distributing electronic inside of your speaker that is creating a filtration for high sounds to go to your tweeter and for what was called a bandpass, like a filter that takes some of the top ones and the bottom ones away and puts them through the mid-range and then we have the low pass which is what passes the deep sounds to the woofer and so you have a bunch of these components in there resistors capacitors and inductors also called coils and so they have an effect to filtrate these tones and the way they do that is particularly with the inductors and the and the capacitors they have a charge and discharge characteristic and so the way they're handling this charge and discharge gives the sound a a, a tonality, a distortion that you want to limit as much as you can. And so the quality of these components do matter, but they matter more in some places than others. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Here, um, you can see a diagram here, and uh, that's a uh, three-way filter uh, second order, second order, um, and that's uh, where you have a component in series uh, that's filtrating, and then you have, and then you're leading uh, some of these tones also to minus by leading uh, instead of uh, resisting them. So that way you create a much steeper filter than if you only had the one component. So that's what's called a second order filter. And the bandpass is down here, that's our mid-range. And you will have two of them because you are limiting the high tones and you're limiting the, limiting the lower tones. Okay, so the two most important things to remember here, that is one, the higher frequency we're talking about, the more important the component's quality is. The second thing, in series, is more important than parallel. And so, what that ends up meaning is that our capacitor up here, in the high pass for the tweeter, is the most important component in your filter. And uh, I have not seen an exception to that rule yet. Um, and so here the, you, you have like different types of uh, components and depending on how far you want to reach and how nice of a tweeter you have chosen, you would pick one. In my experience, picking a capacitor basically at the same price as the tweeter itself has not been completely silly. Now, that's, that's a lot of money, I realize that, but you will hear the difference. Um, of course, there is some, um, some differences in how much value you're getting for your money when you're picking them out, uh, that's for sure. Uh, I recommend looking at um, a uh, big article for capacitors uh, made by Humble Made Hi-Fi. Search that one uh, on Google. It's, it's a really a tremendous amount of uh, work that has been put into that by, by Humble Made Hi-Fi. So up on the C1 here, um, the series capacitor for our tweeter, um, there's where you want to put in the most money into a component. Uh, an MKP uh, foil capacitor 
is the bare minimum, if you ask me. Basically, no matter what kind of uh, um, tweeter you, ha you have, regardless if it's a is if it's cheap cheap bullet tweeter or horn, that is your minimum. You find one of these. This is a um, uh, this is an electrolytic uh, capacitor. You see how it has the uh, like little ring uh, of a uh, narrowing on each side here compared to the um, foil capacitor that is completely smooth. You see these two notches on each side. That's an electrolytic capacitor. That has no business in your high pass. If, if the um, if, if your factory made speaker have one of these, upgrade it. I mean, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. These capacitors can, um, can be down in a low pass as a, as a parallel a deal here. Um, but I wouldn't even do, use them for that. I mean, that's, it's okay down there. That's, that's where you, you could do it. And a, another thing you can do is combine, is that you take half of the value from the electrolytic capacitor or more. If it's really a high value, like 100 microfarads, you could take like, you know, the primary part of it, like 82 uh, from it, and then put a, um, what would that be, an 18? Um, microfarad capacitor parallel to it and, and like connect the legs together like you know like this on each side and then create a 100 microfarad capacitor all together and you'll get some good effects from from the uh, 18 microfarad capacitor okay so yeah so series and and then uh, the higher frequency it will have the importance. So to the bandpass, you will have your C2 here, which is in series, uh, versus the C3. And there you will actually have that difference right there. I will pick two different qualities. I will pick this quality slightly higher than this guy right here. Okay. Um, inductors. So as the capacitor has this... Uh, um, charge and discharge uh, characteristic the inductor has as well. Uh, the capacitor has it for voltage like a battery and the inductor has it for magnetism. And so um, for the high pass up here again the higher frequency more important uh, and here you want to have very little of that characteristic that resistance is called um, hysteresis and um, that you want as little of as, as you can so you need it to be without a core no metal core that's that's a no-no in the high pass so this is minimum this is an air inductor um, and uh, so but it could also be a foil inductor if you want to go uh, nicer if you want some high-end results the reason why you would pick a um, the um, the flat uh, wire, you know, the foil inductor, is that um, is that you have a closer, you have no air between, uh, you know, all these wires going to have a little bit of air in between them, and that resistance uh, or limitation of magnetism by being in air. It will make it so you have to run more of this wire. So you make a you make a longer path of copper to obtain the same inductance. So that's why you can make the foil in inductor uh, with a shorter amount of wire because you get more magnetism, and you still remain because it's air the uh, the very very nice low hysteresis. So that's why those are fantastic. You put wax on it, you know, like, or some kind of mechanically stabilizing uh, material, and it won't sing either. Like, there, there is some mechanical singing. You can, these will make a little bit of sound standing there singing, and, and that stability 
will make this the um, um, the air gaps not changing and so you will have a little bit of distortion because of that and that you'll get even lowered further down if you if you if you get them waxed or you like this one here is baked together which is not as good as giving it wax but it is definitely better than nothing um, yes so again here you you move down to the uh, band pass here you got the l3 which is in series and again that will be uh, equally important as to the l1 um uh, perhaps even a slight bit bit more but it's right there where the l2 actually you can start contemplating getting that um core in there like a metal core um if, if a ferret um or you know a uh, toroid am i saying that right but like um a ring uh, a ring coil yeah uh, in where you have l2 those uh, are perfect here because that will be always be a high value because that is your uh, low pass um, cut off here so this this value here would typically be high and and so that would be a good idea because you move into a different problem once you get down into the low frequencies with air co uh, coils is that the resistance gets really high and the thing is that the um, that uh, hysteresis curve uh, and, and, and distortion from turning the field around becomes less important because it's harder to hear in the low end. And so you want the low resistance because resistance can come in and change your, your box alignment quite a bit. If that gets too high, you know, by you know, having a higher resistance here, you will change the TL uh, parameters from the, on the driver itself. So that's something that you want to uh, think about is that to get something with a core, uh, with a with an actual uh, core like a like a steel or ferret core um, down here. So, but absolutely not up in the in up here in the uh, high pass resistors. Um, the price difference is not very big. Um, between them I mean that is the cheaper part of it I know there are some really expensive resistors out there uh, I will say that the induction free um, uh, resistor like like this one right here is a really good really really good option and that's what you would place on the RP1 like right here as the serial the series um, resistor to your tweeter which is the most important one quality wise and secondly rp2 here your parallel uh, um, resistor um, is the second most important i think it's easy it's just to go with another induction free resistor this is a super s jansen uh, resistor and but you could use the MOX, like MOX MOX uh, resistor right there. It will be fine. But definitely the induction free there. Once you get down here, uh, I would say use the ceramic. It's parallel, it's lower frequency. The reason why you, wanna, uh, you want induction free is that induction works as a first order filter so that means that it will actually kill some of your top end like around 20 kilohertz um in that in that area up in that area past 15 kilohertz and uh, very very high 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 tones just like the air of the sound you almost can call it uh, subjectively um is is where that will have an effect it's because the ceramic resistor has like a a coil of wire going around and around to create the resistance and that's why that that one is bad for high tones um, so the R1 here if you have one of those uh, probably use the marks that would that would be a good one uh, again it would also depend on how your crossover frequency is the higher that is the more important this would be so um, yes 
And lastly, we have our um, we have a, what's called an impedance circuit, an impedance correspondence circuit, or Z Zobel filter, right here and right here. And that's a fairly low um, um, demand there is for those to be to be good. So definitely ceramic uh, capacitors there. Uh, be aware: the more you have to cor you have to correct the the impedance. That means that if your woofer goes really high up in impedance, like raises up and it raises up very soon, like already maybe from already from 400 hertz uh, or something like that, and you want to cross it fairly high, well then this you're gonna be burning off a lot of energy into one of these. All right, I hope you got something out of it. This is was a bit of a long one. Uh, I realized that, and uh, thank you so much for hanging in there. I hope. Uh, that sheds some light on it or else make a comment down below in the comment section and uh, hopefully it's something that I can answer and uh, take care guys and thank you again for, for watching and um, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.